This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. My brother was the athletic one. I was the bookworm. And I loved the three channels that we got on our television stead. You remember those days? Three channels? Only three. That's it. I remember when the UHF channel TBS came on. Channel 17. I thought, well, this, this is it. The future's here. Flying cars are just right around the corner. One of my favorite shows was the show Mission Impossible. I love the way it started. It set up the, the, the impossible mission that Peter Graves and his crew was going to attack that week. And then, of course, the match lights the fuse. And da, 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 You know the song. I loved it. I loved the show. And every week, without fail, Peter Graves and his team did the impossible. They had these amazing uh, costumes that they would wear, or they would do disguises, and every time it worked, and just in the nick of time, things were saved, and everything was wonderful. It was called Mission Impossible. Well, think about our day and age today. 15 years, 20 years, 50 years, certainly 100 years ago, all of the technology that we see in our world today would have looked like magic to our grandparents. <coughs> Why, goodness gracious, life, Apple in April is going to release the iWatch. Dick Tracy, anyone? Calling Dick Tracy. Here it is. I wonder what we're calling impossible today will be common in generations to come. We throw that word around a lot, impossible. And it strikes me as a fascinating concept. Because sure enough, the second I say something is impossible, some technology is invented to make it possible. What I find fascinating, precious friends, is that throughout the generations of human existence, we've called other things impossible that also are not impossible. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, oh, Father, especially when I'm talking about the saints, oh, Father, they were the saints, you see. They were the saints. As if the saints were some kind of creature different than just we mere mortals. And yet, I keep hearing in my ear the old preacher saying years ago about when he, we constantly would... Focus on education. By the way, just as one, one quick tidbit of information. Do you know the number one segment of American society that is number one in education? Greek Americans. Greek Americans are number one in the nation when it comes to education. When it comes to wealth, they're number two. That's why I always get amazed when people say we ain't got the money. Oh, you got the money. You just don't want to give it. Okay, that's fine. That's another subject for another day. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's kind of fun. It's impossible. You should see the eyes of people when I tell them about when, we're, when we build our church, we're going to have about $9 million that we're going to need to spend. And their eyes get big. and You can almost see them grabbing their chest. Father, that's, that's not possible. Okay, watch and see. It's amazing what we call impossible. The old preacher used to say that we're so educated, we're just going to hell smart. Because the reality is, no matter how much technology grows, no matter how many gadgets we create, no matter how many um, uh, convenience items we have in our world, the fact of the matter is, humans are humans. An old priest friend of mine used to tell me all the time, he was, and he's with the Lord now, and he's just uh, just absolutely wonderful guy. When I would serve in the altar in Fort Lauderdale, he would put his arm around me. He was a retired priest, and he would put his arm around me, and he would say, 
Barnabas, people are people. People are people. I would be fussing about something that's going on in the church, and he'd say, oh, Barnabas, people are people. They're just people. People are people. And yet, precious friends, there exists in our orthodoxy, our orthodox way, the spiritual technology to produce saints of men and women. There exists in our faith the stuff that you're experiencing that's washing over you right now, today, in this place, in coming Georgia in 2015, for heaven's sake. But as far away as you can get from the traditional uh, lands of orthodoxy as you can go without getting into the water. And yet here in this place, the spiritual technology that has produced men and women who are like Jesus Christ for centuries is available to you and me. In both of our passages of our, of our scripture lesson today, we heard the word impossible and we heard the word possible. In the epistle lesson, we found out that it was impossible for God to lie. That's not possible, folks. I don't care how good Peter Graves is. That's not possible. That's a mission he's not going to succeed on. God cannot lie. But then we come to our gospel lesson today, and we see the scene that we've heard over and over again. By the way, today is the day that we remember St. John Climacus. St. John was the author of the Ladder of Divine Ascent. In that book, he describes 33 rungs of a spiritual ladder that get us from our mundane existence to being like Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful book. If you ever get a chance to read it, please do. I know reading is out of favor in our modern world, but suck it up and make it happen, okay? Read the book. It's a wonderful testimony. And St. John wrote it for other monks. But the principles that are there are absolutely wonderful. In fact, we even have an icon in our church of St. John Climacus Ladder. And on the ladder, we see the men and women, mainly bishops and priests. That makes me nervous. Climbing the ladder, and the angels are trying to help them up, and the demons are there trying to pull them down or trip them up and let them fall off the ladder. I guarantee you in my situation, maybe rung three and then I don't be on the ground again. But that's okay. The fathers tell us that when we fall, we get immediately back up again. That's what we do. And so on this Sunday of St. John Climacus, on this Sunday of, of the ladder, the church gives us the one impossibility of God being a liar. And the second possibility that even that which looks impossible is possible if you dare to believe. Now, belief, precious friends, isn't just mental assent to some idea or concept. That's the mistake that we've made in the West. We think that believe, in fact, I never will forget a, um, a BBC uh, documentary where they were going through the, the city of London and they were asking people if they believed in God. London is very much further along in their post-Christian existence than even we are here in the United States. By the way, did you know that there are more Muslim mosques in London than there are Christian churches now? So, they were going down the road and they were asking people and they came up to this precious lady, a beautiful lady, and, uh, and they said, dear, do you believe in God? She said, oh yes, I believe, but I don't worship. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, that's just confusing to me because the Greek word for believe insists that mental assent is always too weak to be actual belief. The Greek word for believe means not only do I give mental assent, but I follow up that mental assent with proof by the way I act. That's what believe means, folks. That's why we have believed, we are believing now, and we're going to keep on believing no matter what. So that the cognitive dissonance that is so common in we Americans, I like what Father uh, Thomas Hopko said of blessed memory, Father Thomas will be buried tomorrow. Father Thomas Hopko said that for the most part, Americans are functional atheists. What do you mean by that, Father Barnabas? Well, it's simply this, that we 
talk a good game. We do. We can, we can, in fact, we Orthodox are the best at it because we can recite the, 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 the Nicene Creed right off the top of our head, can't we? What do you believe? Well, I believe in God the Father, all maker of heaven and earth. We can just go right on. But that word believe holds a much more powerful meaning than simple mental assent to a concept or an idea. Jesus confronts this father who brings this boy to him. By the way, he had tried to bring him the disciples. Talk about embarrassing. They couldn't do anything about it. So they bring this boy to, this, to our Lord Jesus, and the boy is in a bad way. Has all of the earmarks of epilepsy. He's been th being thrown into the fire. The devil's trying to destroy this kid, just like the devil's trying to destroy all of us. And the man says, if you can do anything. And Jesus confronts the man and says, what do you mean, if you can? All things are, po watch, all things are possible to him who believes. On this Sunday of St. John Climacus, this Sunday of Great Lent, the church challenges you and me this morning to banish from our thinking a lie. And that lie is this. I can never overcome my habits and mistakes. That lie is this. I can never make any progress in being faithful to Jesus Christ. That's a lie. The lie is this. I am stuck in where I am. That's a lie. This morning, the church lays before us the ladder of divine ascent and asks of us something great. She invites us to be who we are, to become the faithful, to become by grace what Christ is by nature, to forever banish the small and mediocre idea that, I, well, I'm just one of the regular people. There's never been so, anything, for, any such thing. C.S. Lewis said, you've never met a mere mortal. You've never met a mere mortal. In your whole life, you've never met a mere mortal because in a hundred years, you will look at that person and either recoil in terror at the hideousness of what they've become or they will be so beautiful, you will be tempted to fall down and worship them. Because what's going on in every one of our lives this morning, in this spot, in this place, in coming Georgia, in this precious Greek Orthodox Church, is nothing less than the technology of the Spirit to form the character of Christ in each of us if we have the courage to believe today. In this place, all of the spiritual technology to do what you never dreamed you could do is here. And all you have to do is embrace it. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org. Mm -hmm.